Hello everyone, welcome to the special 100th video on my channel. Like I just mentioned, this is my special 100th video for my channel. I am really surprised that I was actually able to make it to 100 videos, but here we are, and I thought I would do a kind of special event type thing. This video is going to be something a little bit different. Originally, when I first had the ideas for the channel, I really wanted to talk about comic books a lot, and I haven't really had that opportunity yet. So instead of doing some type of special movie review or something like that, I thought with this video I'm going to do an overview of my comic book collection specifically the hardcovers trade paperbacks and omnibuses and all kind of stuff like that but before I get into it I just want to give a little bit of background about my life in comic books for as long as I can remember I've always been a big fan of comic book superheroes I was born in the late 80s I grew up in the 90s and if you were around in the 90s and were a child you were exposed to so much comic book hero stuff when whether it was the movies or the animated series on television or whatever, you really got a full dose of it. And it's always been part of my life. And I haven't actually collected comic books until I've gotten older. And it's only then that I realized how complicated comic books can get to collect. There are so many different versions, there are so many different titles, there are so many different writers, there are so many different publishers that you really have to do some research on it. So it wasn't really until about 2010, 2011, where I actually started collecting comic books properly. I started buying all the graphic novels and trade paperbacks and stuff like that and really started to learn about the world of comic books. Now you'll notice in my collection I do have a lot of gaps and a lot of incomplete portions and for someone who is a completist like myself it really pains me that I have a lot of gaps in the collection and also you'll notice that my collection is very DC Comics heavy especially Batman. As you can tell wearing my Green Lantern shirt and my Green Lantern power ring I am very much a big fan of DC Comics comics but I do have a few Marvel titles and I'm very open to reading Marvel and reading all the other publishers especially the indie publishers like IDW, Image, and Dark Horse they have great titles as well but now that I've given you that background information let's get to the actual collection. Hello everyone I'm back here and before I start off doing this properly I just want to apologize for the bad lighting and of course the shaky cam because I am shooting this all handheld, so I'll try to keep it as steady as possible, but please excuse it if it's a little shaky at times. So starting off here, we have a graphic novel about the 1980s animated show Robotech, which is a one of my favorite animated series of all time. It's a great show from the 1980s. I really, really love it, and this is kind of something I found on eBay that I really wanted just for kind of collector's posterity, if you will. But moving on here, I have three volumes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 8. Um, these have since been reprinted in giant library forms, uh, which is kind of uh, Dark Horse's version of an omnibus or a, an absolute edition. And here we have the kind of continuation of the show Firefly in the Serenity comics, and there are one, two, three, and there's also a fourth one that just came out recently, and I really want to get my hands on that. But moving on is the complete series of Frank Miller's Sin City, which have been made into two movies directed by Robert Rodriguez, but they haven't really covered the entire story. This is an older edition set of the series. They've since reprinted it uh, probably several times since, but I've had this for years, and I really like how when you put all the books together, they create this really awesome picture on the side. I always really like things like that. And moving on here is a hardcover edition of Crisis on Infinite Earths. And Crisis on Infinite Earths pretty much started the entire DC continuity over in the 1980s, the huge crossover event. Brian Azzarello's Joker, and this is a really dark tale about the Joker in the same vein as the Heath Ledger character from the Dark Knight film. Um, here is Grant Morrison's famous Arkham Asylum. This is 
a really trippy, just gorgeously drawn story of Batman kind of descending into the madness of Arkham Asylum. Next up is an Elseworlds story, Gotham by the Gaslight, which is kind of what would it be like if Gotham was set in a kind of turn of the century time period. Here is kind of a Batman Christmas story that's called Batman Noel that's really kind of cool to read around Christmas time. It's kind of like Charles Dickens, but for Batman. <clears throat> Here is, of course, Frank Miller's famous Dark Knight Returns. This has, of course, been reprinted many, many times in new editions that just came out recently. It's had an absolute edition, but it is one of the quintessential Batman stories that I honestly would say is a must read for Batman comic book fans. It's where I got my start and I do highly recommend it. Here is the sequel, Dark Knight Strikes Again, which is not the best story. The artwork is not quite the same. The story is not very good. Here's All-Star Batman and Robin, which is also written by Frank Miller. And it's kind of the Batman in his Dark Knight Returns universe, but in his younger form when he was going around fighting crime with Robin. It is not an actually complete story. I've heard that Frank Miller still needs to complete this. And here is a new series that just came out. It's Dark Knight 3 Master Race. I've gotten this in this really cool hardcover edition. Each of them contain one issue of the entire run. And if you've seen on the side here, they kind of create this picture. They've since come out with several more uh, volumes of this that I have to get my hands on. Here is Batman Year One, which is yet again another essential Batman story. Here's another one by Grant Morrison called Batman Gothic that has also since been reprinted. This is an older edition here. And then moving on is Batman Long Halloween. And yet again, you're going to be hearing me say this again, another essential Batman story. And it was actually very much basis for Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. These are its subsequent follow-ups by Jeff Loeb in Dark Victory and Haunted Night. Um, these have since been reprinted as well, so you'll probably find different editions, but of course I believe it's the same content. Here is Batman Night of the Beast. Then we have Batman Cult, and then we have Batman A Death in the Family, which is of course the famous story where the Joker kills the Jason Todd Robin, who then later on becomes the Red Hood. This is one of, yet again, a, a pivotal story in the Batman universe. This is, this is Batman Blind Justice. But next up here is Azrael, which is very much a prequel story to Batman Nightfall, because for those of you who don't know, when Bane breaks Batman's back, someone else to take over as Batman, and that was Azrael, a character that we haven't really seen in live action form yet. But this is Nightfall Volumes 1 and 2. There is a third volume in the series. If you're wondering what this is over here, these are just individual Batman comics that tie into the Nightfall series that they haven't really put into a collected form yet. And it's unfortunate because I think there's a lot to Nightfall that hasn't been collected yet, but I know they're coming out with a new omnibus edition of Nightfall, so who knows what will be included in those. This is Batman No Man's Land, which is also another kind of great landmark series for, for Batman. Yet again, you can see I am missing a lot of the volumes in there. It's a very multi-layered, multi-part story. Here is Batman Hush, written by Jeff Loeb and, and drawn by Jim Lee. And this is volume one and volume two. This is a fantastic story that I would love to see done in live action. But yet again, this is an older edition. These have since been collected into one edition that you can find pretty much anywhere these days. Also is Batman Under the Red Hood, which is the return of Jason Todd. These originally were volume were printed in two volumes are now in one and here in the middle is batman broken city if you're wondering what type of order any of these are in i tried to keep them in some type of continuity order that's the one thing about comics that you really need to do your research on is where do things take place in what type of context and things like that but moving on here is batman and son which is the start of Grant Morrison's run on the character, which I have been reading a lot of recently, and it is very, very good. Grant Morrison is very unique in all of his comic book forms, especially on his take of Batman. But here I have Batman Private Case Book, which kind of ties into the whole thing. Here is Batman Black Glove and Batman R.I.P. I know they've since combined Batman and Son and the Black Glove into one volume. 
Here is Batman R.I.P., which is yet again a continuation of the Grant Morrison run. Here is Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader, done by Neil Gaiman, which is really a fantastic kind of what-if story. It really takes place at a kind of faux funeral for the Batman, and what it would be like for his rogues gallery to kind of mourn his death. Here is Batman and Robin, Batman Reborn, which is when... Dick Grayson took over as the Batman. These are two volumes here of kind of the Dick Grayson Batman exploits uh, written by Paul Dini. Uh, this is yet again another Batman and Robin, Batman vs. Robin, which is another story in the Grant Morrison run. There is a third volume of this I still need to get, which I'm glad is still actually in print. And next up is Batman Time and the Batman, Batman The Return of Bruce Wayne, Batman the Black Mirror, and then that is kind of the end of the Batman stuff that I have for the old continuity. I have a lot of the New 52 stuff in single issues, so I have to really get my hands on a lot of the collected versions. Next up is a little bit of Jeff Johns' run on The Flash, which I have, starting with The Flash Rebirth, which reintroduces Barry Allen back into the continuity, and The Flash, The Dashly Death of the Rogues, and The Road to Flashpoint. I have Flashpoint in individual issues in a long box somewhere. This is Forever Evil, which is a crossover event in the New 52, and here I have Green Arrow, The Longbow Hunters, which is the start of a long run by Mike Grell that I have to get the other volumes for. If you see below here, I have two power rings, the blue power ring and the, of course, classic green power ring. And over here is the start of Jeff John's run on Green Lantern that went from 2004 to 2013. That is a significant, significant run on the character. Here you can see I have the first omnibus edition of Jeff Johns. I actually collected pretty much his entire run in individual trades and am rebuying them in the omnibus form, kind of to save shelf space and because I like to have all the stories collected in uh, one volume or in this case three volumes. There are another two of these I have to get my hands on. And then we have here is the Rage of the Red Lanterns, Secret Origin, Agent Orange, and I have the volumes of Blackest Night, and then Brightest Day, War of the Green Lanterns. This is the Blackest Night event. And here are Volumes 1 and Volumes 3 of Brightest Day. I am missing two, but since they are actually collected in these omnibus forms, I'm just going to wait until I get the, the omnibus in which the issues are contained. And here at the end, which I'm sorry, it is super dark, you probably can't see it, is the start of the JLA series from the, the 1990s that stretched into the 2000s. It actually starts here with Justice League Midsummer's Nightmare, which I'm not sure if it's collected in any other edition besides this one here. If you were wondering what came before that here is this is a Nightwing ties that bind they are currently re-releasing all of the Nightwing individual series in trade paperback form that I'm probably going to pick up and continuing what I was just saying this is the JLA series that was written by a bunch of different people but most prominently Grant Morrison and then t taking over for Grant Morrison was Mark Wade and it goes onward and onward I'm missing a lot of volumes here I that I need to catch up on. They have also reissued these in collected volume form where they basically collect two story arcs in one volume and you can buy those. They are way more affordable and easier to find than these individual ones because a lot of these have gone out of print. And here I have the large event omnibus of Infinite Crisis. Basically what happens in the JLA storyline here leads into the Infinite Crisis, which is kind of a sequel to Crisis on Infinite Earths in a way. Moving down here to the next section where you can obviously tell the lighting is better and the angles are better. Starting here is 52 Volume 1. 52 was basically a weekly series that went on for a year. Kind of just individual stories for a bunch of um, lesser characters in the DC Universe. Because what happened at the end of Infinite Crisis is kind of the main characters, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, kind of went away for a year. But this has since been collected in an omnibus form, as well as new trade paperback forms that basically combine two of the volumes into one trade paperback. Here is Kingdom Come, which is a famous Elseworlds story, probably one of the most famous in DC Comics history, drawn by the great Alex Ross, who just makes these gorgeous paintings and comic books. 
Now here is the start of the Justice Society of America run. These are interesting because these are kind of like the first things I picked up not knowing what the Justice Society was and where this fell in continuity and anything like that. So I picked up these three and this was written by Jeff Johns in the mid-2000s, and this is also kind of the concurrent Justice League of America comic that was going on at the same time. I yet again have to pick up the remaining volumes in this as well. And this is Identity Crisis, and here I have Suicide Squad, the new 52 run of Suicide Squad. I have the first two volumes here, I gotta pick up the rest. I also wanna pick up the John Ostrander run of Suicide Squad from the 80s and 90s which is kind of what the film was really based on. It was a combo of kind of this and the old stuff. Uh, here is Superman section that starts with Superman Birthright, Superman Batman, Superman Red Sun, which is fantastic story. If you really want to read a great Superman story that doesn't really connect with anything, definitely check this out. This is Superman Chronicles Volume 2. Basically what DC Comics tried to do several years ago was reprint their old Golden Age comic books of their classic characters in these Chronicles editions. The problem is, is I don't really ever think they finished the run on any of those characters, so they're kind of incomplete and I just kind of have a random volume too. Here is Alan Moore's Whatever Happened to the Caped Crusader. I actually did a full-on review of this title early on in my channel's history and I'll put a link to that below. It's a, it's a really great story ending the pre-crisis on Infinite Earth continuity of Superman. And coincidentally, this here started the new continuity of Superman post-Crisis on Infinite Earths in the late 80s. And I have uh, Volumes 1, Volumes 2, and Volume 4. There are several more volumes of this I have to get my hands on. Here I have is Superman Exiles, Superman Time and Time Again, and then I have Superman They Save Luther's Brain. And moving on to this giant omnibus, The Death and Return of Superman. This is a landmark story because this is where Superman died and then subsequently returned. This is of course when he has his famous fight with Doomsday. And moving on here is a multi-volume set of Superman stories, Superman No Limits, Till Death Do Us Part, and Critical Condition. I'm missing a couple of volumes in here, as you can see. I have volumes 1, 3, and 4. Next is Superman Godfall, Superman Last Son, Superman Escape from the Bizarro World, and then I have the beginning and most of Jeff Johns' run on the Superman character, starting with Brainiac and moving on to Superman New Krypton, and in there is Superman mon -El, and then Superman Nightwing, and Flamebird, and then Superman New Krypton Volume 3. The reason why I have it this way is apparently that is the way it's supposed to be read in continuity form. And next I have a few giant omnibus titles. Here is Teen Titans Omnibus, written by Jeff Johns. This, he did a long run on Teen Titans in the mid-2000s. Then I have the new Teen Titans Omnibus Volume 3. Volume 1 and 2 are now out of print, but I know that Volume 1 is being reprinted later this year. Next up here I have the George Perez Omnibus of Wonder Woman, which is just a fantastic thing to get for the price. There is a second volume coming out later this year. I also just want more Wonder Woman in the collection. I have a lot of her run from the New 52 in single issue form in my long boxes, but I really want to get a lot of the old classic Wonder Woman titles. And here at the end here, I have a lot of Peanuts comic strips. Um, these have been collected um, in these box forms where they basically come with two volumes in one box. Peanuts has always been something that's near and dear to my heart. If you're wondering what this is up here, it's a Peanuts book, Charlie Brown All-Stars. So moving down here, we're actually getting into more of the indie title world. If you're wondering how these have been kind of grouped so far, I have them in alphabetical order by publisher as well as titles so you know with each publisher i put the books in alphabetical order as well as some type of story order that i've that i've tried to figure out over the years but continuing here is kick-ass kick-ass 2 i really need the hit girl spin-off series that happened in between kick-ass and kick-ass 2 that kind of bridges the storylines then i have angel after the fall basically volumes one two three and four there are a few more volumes of that i need to pick up essentially that was the comic book continuation of the Angel television series that was the spin-off of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The next up here is volume one of Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover series that's put out by IDW and DC Comics. The next up I have one of my favorite current series and that is Saga written by Brian K. Vaughn and this is a series that I've talked about most recently a little bit on my March haul video 
where I picked up Volume 7, which is the newest volume to be released. And these have also been printed in hardcover form. There's a hardcover Volume 1, which I believe prints the first couple of individual trade paperback volumes. And then there's a second one coming out that I think prints the rest. I'm not quite sure at which they've gone up to, but... Basically, I would recommend just buying the series any way you can because it is fantastic. And next up here is Sex Criminals. There are two more volumes of this I have to get. This is a very interesting series, also put out by Image Comics. I really have to get a lot more Image Comics, a lot more indie comics in my collection. Here I have uh, The Walking Dead, which I'm pretty sure many of you are familiar with. Now I decided to pick up the hardcover volumes. And I have volumes 1 through 9. And here is where I start the Marvel stuff. Yet again, not a lot of Marvel stuff. You'll definitely see there's some titles in there. Uh, here I have, starting with Avengers, Captain America by Ed Brubaker. That is starts with the Winter Soldier storyline that I really need to get the rest of because this first trade paperback is fantastic. Definitely, if you want to read Captain America, read this story. It's very, very good. Then I have Marvel Civil War. And then I have a few volumes of the Marvel Now titles that they came out with a few years ago. Here is Gardens of the Galaxy, Hawkeye, and Miss Marvel. These are all volume ones. Here is... Uh, a few Iron Man titles, Iron Man Extremis, Iron Man Execute Program, Invincible Iron Man by Matt Fraction. Uh, here I have a few Spider-Man titles. I need more Spider-Man. Uh, this is actually Marvel's. It's an interesting story telling the iconic events in Marvel comic book history through the lens of a reporter. Here I have his kind of random volumes of Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man and Venom. Here I have Spider-Man and Carnage. And here I have the Volume 1 of Ultimate Spider-Man. This here is the individual issues for Star Wars Shattered Empire, which was a four-issue miniseries that took place right after the end of Return of the Jedi. This has also been collected in trade paperback form. And here I have the new Marvel Star Wars comic book series. This is the Star Wars main series or Skywalker series. I've read all these and the stories are fantastic. And they are all part of the new Star Wars canon. So I definitely highly recommend this. Also, if you're a fan of Darth Vader, these comics are really, really awesome. They really show a lot of the inner workings of the character. Here is the best of Wolverine. Here is X-Men Days of Future Past. God Loves Man Kills. Here is X-Men Fall of the Mutants. And here is X-Men Extinction Agenda. X-Men Inferno. And this is the first volume in the Chris Claremont X-Men Omnibus. Here is X-Men Executioner Song and X-Men Dreams End. So moving on down here is... Is more X-Men stuff here is X-Men Eve of Destruction and then New X-Men Omnibus by Grant Morrison. This is a fantastic run on this series. I highly recommend checking it out. But moving on here is actually individual volumes of the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic books from Mirage. Basically, these have all been reprinted now in various forms. These are more collector's items than anything else. And here I have the complete Scott Pilgrim that's put out by Oni Press and it's written by Brian Lee O'Malley. I love the film so, so much that I had to go out right away and buy the comic books. And trust me, it's definitely worth checking this out if you are a fan of the movie. And here I have kind of a vertigo section, starting with Alan Moore's V for Vendetta, Alan Moore's Watchmen, which is a touchstone series on the comic book genre. This is The Extraordinary Gentleman. Then I have Preacher Book 1 by Garth Ennis, which has now been turned into a TV series. And then I have two volumes of Neil Gaiman Sandman, yet again incomplete. And then I have three volumes of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. But next up here is The Invisibles Omnibus by Grant Morrison. And then next up here is a very small manga section that I uh, need to beef up in a big, big way that I'm going to be doing soon. Starting here with the Dragon Ball manga that's, that starts with Dragon Ball and then transitions into Dragon Ball Z. I gotta get the rest of these volumes here. I believe there's nine of these, so I'm obviously way behind. And here is book one of the Black Edition of Death Note, which I showed in the March Hole video. And then here at the end of kind of the larger things that I couldn't really fit anyplace else, like I said, the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series by Mirage has been reprinted and this is one of the editions. This is the ultimate edition put out by IDW. I have to get the rest of these volumes and here at the end are three absolute 
editions from DC Comics, Absolute All-Star Superman, Absolute Crisis on Infinite Earths, and Absolute Batman Long Halloween. Here at the beginning is actually a coffee table book about the X-Men characters in their universe. I kind of bought that because it was kind of in a bargain section. Understanding comics by Scott McCloud, really kind of understanding the the way comics are written, the style in which they are written. It's kind of an instructional book on how to write comics, but it's very insightful if you are a comic book fan. And these here are all proper graphic novels. Um, I took a course on graphic novels in college, and that's where a lot of these come from. Starting off here is uh, the Arrival, Asterios Polyp. This is Joe Sacco's uh, Palestine. And here is Mouse, which is probably one of the most famous graphic novels of all time. If you are not into the whole comic book superhero thing, but you're interested in comics, definitely read these, but read Mouse. It's just an extraordinary story. This is um, Jerusalem. This is Blankets, The Complete Persepolis, which has been turned into a movie. This is Epileptic, that's Fun Home, and there is Cancer Vixen, and that is the end of the comic book shelf. So that has been my comic book collection overview. If there are any of those books that you want to see in more depth, please let me know so I can make videos about them. But most importantly, if you like this video, please check out the other videos on my channel.